We're going to talk of drawing from the well of salvation using the water pot of knowledge. Amen. Water pot of knowledge. You see, we have been um, being uh, prepared and being given platforms on various uh, water pots. And um, I tell you that we have acquired enough water pots that will enable us to overcome this year, and it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Uh, because when you are living in abundance, nothing is lacking in your side. And that is what is being uh, fed us all these weeks, all these uh, months, that as we begin to run, there will be no scarcity in our lives. If you believe it, shout a better amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Water pot of knowledge. Let's quickly look at um, Proverbs chapter number 2. Proverbs 2, 1 to 6. Say, so my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my, and hide my commandment with thee, so that thou incline unto I incline thy ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest her, and searchest for her as for uh, hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth commit knowledge and understanding. Praise the Lord. Water pot of knowledge. You see, it takes only knowledge for you to know what is happening in your environment, even in your life. When we are singing about trust and obey, the Spirit is telling me that some people did not even know that it requires knowledge to trust and obey. Praise the Lord. Uh, because if you don't have knowledge about the God we are talking about, it will be difficult for you to trust and obey. A lot of people are going through challenges because they lack knowledge in that respect. Praise the Lord. Uh, you see, so a lot of people, they have information, they have uh, knowledge, I mean, they don't have uh, a deeper understanding of it, and they are suffering because they could not take the little step that is required to conquer their situations. Praise the Lord. We are, for those of us that have gone through BSF 101, a place of knowledge, that was detailed in that place. And um, each time people go through that course, you see them weeping because there are things that they're supposed to have avoided, the things that they're supposed to have done and uh, dusted, but it kept um, uh, 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 disturbing their lives all, all through. And after many years must have passed, they now come to realize that, ah, this is as simple as ABC. Praise the Lord. Somebody say knowledge. Yes. So when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Praise the Lord. Your perspective of God determines the way he appears to you. That's the truth. So there are people who know God at different levels, at different steps. There are some people that know him that is just ordinary God. And he becomes ordinary God to them. Amen. For example, if you think you need a loan to move forward, God will arrange it for you. Yes. If you think you want to marry... And that is what you are presenting to God. And you know him as someone that can provide a good wife for you. He will do it for you. Praise the Lord. So, if you think, if you come to realize that you don't need it, you realize that those things you are asking God, that you don't need it anymore, he will change the pattern. He will change the situation. So, he deals with you according to your perspective about him. There are some people that know him as a, 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 a provider. He, he provides for them. Some know him as a protector. He protects them. Some know him as uh, other people's God and is so for them. Amen. So, it is the light you have that determines your flight. The light that you have determines your flight. 
What do I mean? You know, the knowledge you have about situation determines the speed with which you go. A lot of people, uh, okay, there's this example, somebody was to fix something in a computer that shouldn't take five minutes. He spent days. Then by the time he now realized that, okay, let me call an expert. He called the expert, within five minutes, it was fixed. So that is the light the person had at that time. So the water pot of knowledge is on the increase. What do I mean? Knowledge is on the increase, especially at this age. What you know yesterday might be obsolete today. Amen. So it is very clear that our world is changing in everything quickly. A recent analysis by the experts showed that the rate of change of knowledge doubles now every six months. How many months? That every six months, new things are coming out, new things are becoming obsolete, and all that. If you check um, models of cars these days, initially it used to be once in a year they will bring a model, but now, every now and then, mod various models are coming. Praise the Lord. That is the world we are into. So about a century ago, the rate of change of knowledge was about 200 to, uh, to 300 years after the previous level of knowledge. And from there, it has increased so much that now, if you think you know something six months ago and you are still working by it, you are already obsolete. Praise the Lord. You are already outdated. In those days, somebody will pro uh, propose a, 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 a hypothesis and it will be working for a long time. But now, as you are finishing your own hypothesis, another person is coming up with his own. Before you know it, you are overtaking. So, the age we are into, if you must uh, draw the well of salvation with the water pot of knowledge, you have to be current, you have to be consistent in seeking for knowledge. Praise the Lord. So, we don't know what it will become very shortly. You cannot claim to be excellent if what you know yesterday or last year is still what you are working with today. Praise the Lord. If that is the case, you need to check yourself again because that information may, must have been faulted. In the business world in particular, one thing that is constant is what? Change. And it is at, that, it's at the point of change that many of, many of the people become dropouts. Even companies drop out. Praise the Lord. I had experience some years ago in the company I was working. We are satellite um, experts, both installation and operations. So it got to a point that um, another technology came in. And we are telling the manager at that point in time that there is a new technology in town. He said we should not bother. That there, nobody can do without such light. So, we, we stayed. After about three months, we started losing the customers. They would just call you, sorry, the commission 50 sites from your network. We are, no, we are no longer using them. Like joke, like joke, that was how the company came down. Praise the Lord. Because we refused to uh, uh, move forward with the change. Change is constant. May we never be overtaken by change in the name of Jesus. So business failure comes when the climate of business changes. Yes, you have to, if, you are, if you are wise, you have to be constant. I mean, you have to be conscious of the changes that happen on daily basis. The, chain, the changes of our time in business world is so high that you need to be prepared for change at a consistent rate. Your approach has to change, otherwise you'll be left behind. Things are changing too quickly, and it is changing in all fields of life. It's not in a particular place. It cuts across every uh, walks of life. So we need to watch it. We need to uh, be conversant with it. The ministry is not even left out. So that, that is why a pastor who thinks he can continue to pastor this, the way he did last year, has already failed or is out of ministry. Knowledge needs to be updated. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, knowledge needs to be updated. Yes, and it's constant. I don't know if you are using Windows, you will discover that almost every two weeks, they will be prompting you for updates. Update. You need to update your system. And 
not only that they will be prompting you, they will be telling you that as so so number of days they will shut you down to update because they know the importance of uh, not updating the information or the software. Praise the Lord. Things are changing everywhere. And like I said earlier on, what, move, uh, what makes people fail, practically speaking, is the change that are caused that they did not respond to. What do I mean? If a change comes and you are not aware, and you are aware and you did not respond to it, it will overtake you. But that will not be a person in the name of Jesus. So progress comes from our response to changes. That's where you make progress. When you respond to changes, keep responding to changes, and it will keep taking you to the next level. Every step of the way uh, brings uh, progress when you adapt to changes. Amen. So, if the tone of music changes, and you don't, ch you don't change your uh, footsteps, what will happen? The beating and your dancing step will, will not match. You'll be jumping up while the beat is going down. Are we together? So the music of business, the music of career, music of ministry, the music of um, even artisan works is changing. And our steps must change along. Otherwise, we will become old, odd. We become kicked out and thrown out. And that's what is affecting a lot of people in the marketplace today because the music uh, uh, tone has changed and they are not aware of it. I have a friend that was dealing with uh, uh, wood. We call it timber. You know, they only go buy and come and sell. He got to a point that he didn't know that there is scarcity of uh, wood around. So he, he, when he now goes to market, there will be no wood to buy. And I was telling him, can't you change this business? He said, no, that's what he's, uh, he learned, and um, that's the only thing he can do. And um, unfortunately, he's out of business. And he's not um, a respecter of person, knowledge. Somebody says knowledge. The water part of knowledge must be current. It must be current. You have to be current with the current situations. Otherwise, you are out of it. If we must draw from well of salvation, if we are not current with information, the current of life, life challenges, will deform us. You know that life has, the challenges of life comes with current. It comes with a force. So if, the, if you are not current, that current will carry you. Praise the Lord. That current will move you out of the way. But we are now being uh, given what it takes to add, add another water pot on what we have, the water pot of knowledge, so that we can beat the current of the life challenges. If you believe it, say better amen. amen. Let somebody say amen. amen. So these things, these are changing. Things are changing, and only men and women who are changing will catch up with the rate of things that are changing. There are many professionals today who are not current, and you know them by their outdated references. You go to court, you see some lawyers that are still referencing um, 1990-something uh, cases because they are not uh, updated with the current uh, cases. There are still, they are still using the information of five years ago to solve today's challenges. In most times, it will not work. So if you are not a learner, you will be left out. Praise the Lord. Tell yourself, I'm a learner. Never you assume a state of rest. There is no point in time that you get to a point that you now say, okay, I've mastered it all. I can't continue learning. I'm now learning myself. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, the, in the BSF class we just finished, you see some senior people that will be, you know, saying that, ah, uh, thank God that they attended this class. That there are things that they think they know and they did not know. There was one of them that said that God gave her a revelation. She has been praying on that revelation and was not getting results. He posted it on our platform and I asked her, what kind of prayer are you praying? He said, well, I'm a deliverance minister, so I know the, the place of warfare. I said, okay, that is why you are not getting answer. Praise the Lord. 
So you need to have a better knowledge. Amen. And so it is to most of us. We are given information. We don't want to process it further. And we are praying wrong prayers. Every wrong prayer that you pray will not give you the right solution. Amen. But we are in the place of knowledge that we know what to do at every point in time. And I also discovered that when you are knowledgeable about a thing, solution becomes simple. Are you with me? When you are knowledgeable of a matter, it becomes what? Very easy. It's what you don't know that you struggle about. And I want to let you know that the essence of knowledge is for you to draw boundaries. At what point will I get to? To know that this, solution, this problem uh, is not yielding to my solution. Don't wait for two months. Don't wait for one year before you realize. Or wait for years before you realize. Because in that BSF class, a lot of people were crying. If I had known this ten years ago, if I had known this five years ago, this would not have happened. Even to us here, we have gotten this knowledge, but we are not applying it. We said that knowledge is power, but I want to tell you that it's only application of knowledge that is power. Praise the Lord. From today, you begin to apply knowledge in the name of Jesus. So, keep hunting for information in the areas of, int of your interest and behave as if you don't know anything. Do you get that? Anywhere you find yourself, keep hunting for information. Don't assume that you've known everything. No. Assume that you, doesn't know, you don't know anything and keep get, get, uh, getting hungry on daily basis seeking for knowledge. So knowledge is the leader. How much you know determines how far you can lead and your leadership qualities. There is no man of understanding without knowledge. Neither is there a wise man that is ignorant. Praise the Lord. I will not want you to be ignorant from now onwards in the name of Jesus. I say you will never be ignorant in the name of Jesus. So lack of knowledge is the shortest way to poverty. It's the shortest way to perishing. It's also the shortest way to death. Yes, because a lot of people died, not that they have not gone to the best hospitals, but they are not addressing the issue that is disturbing them. So that they will go through all manner of places, spend all the money, at the end of the day, they will die because they refuse to sort out the actual issues. Amen. Amen. So, and Jesus, no knowledge is a waste. And I beg to add that when you stop learning, you start dying. When you stop what? Learning, you start dying. Because if uh, uh, the brain, the brain uh, tries, the brain lives better when you are um, upgrading it, when you are expanding it with knowledge and all that. I know there are some people that, they are, since they left school, they've never picked up a textbook to find out what is inside. That is not the best way to live. You need knowledge. You need knowledge. I say you need knowledge in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said that you shall know the truth, and only the truth can make you free. Amen. In John 18, 37 to 38. John 18, 37 to 38. Jesus had an encounter with uh, Pilate in that scenario, and um, they left each other unhappy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 37 says, Sorry, uh, I was looking for John. Okay, quickly. He said, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. That's it. And Pilate said unto him, What is truth? 
And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find him no fault at all. Praise the Lord. When Pilate asked what is the truth, Jesus refused to answer. Because Jesus expected that the man of his level should have knowledge of truth. And what is truth? Truth is knowledge plus understanding plus wisdom. At that instance, Pilate lacks that. And he was still asking what is truth. And that is the first thing that they brought Jesus to, to be judged. How can you judge somebody that is higher than you? Praise the Lord. And that's what is happening all over the place. You are doing business with people that, um, that doesn't have knowledge. The people that doesn't have understanding. And you, you yourself, you are following them everywhere they take you to. That is uh, 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 that's abnormal. From today, it will change. Because of the knowledge that you have and you are acquiring, and you will continue to acquire even after this meeting, you will be at the top. I say you will make a way for yourself. So, knowledge is the way to go. All the parts that we've been discussing, if you have no knowledge, you will not be able to fit in. Is it the uh, uh, no, uh, water pot of service? Is it the water pot of uh, hospitality? Is it the water pot of giving? If you don't have knowledge, you will not be able to fit into those because you need to know what you, are, uh, what you want to do for you to do it very well. Praise the Lord. So, how do I acquire knowledge? How do I acquire knowledge? Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse 15. Proverbs 18, 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Praise the Lord. So, number one is through research. Through what? Research. Yes. Through research. Give yourself to facts finding. Give yourself to facts finding. Anything you want to do, first of all, go and study it. Research about it. Get all the information that you need to get. I tell you, by the time you, you are done, you will be ahead of so many circumstances. You are ahead of so many situations. You will be on top. Proverbs 25 two says, it is, the, uh, is the, it is the glory of God to cancel information, but it's the glory of the kings to search it out. So, you are a king, you are a queen, begin to search out information. Search out information. That situation that is difficult, you have prayed about it and you, uh, you are not getting through. Find out more. There is something that is missing that you need to find out. Number two, read books. What did I say? <laughs> read books. Reading stimulates the brain and causes it to expand, to expand the lens of imagination. Don't neglect the power of books. Somebody said that if you want to hide something from a black man, put it inside book. Praise the Lord. But let, let it not be so with you in the name of Jesus. Wherever they put it, you will search it out. In the name of Jesus. Conscious oppression. Don't execute action without thinking. That's what most people do. I've uh, been in this business for 10 years. So there's nothing you can tell me about it. So they wake up in the morning, they go to the office. The same thing they do from morning to evening, from Monday to Friday. That's what they do from week to week, from month to month. No thinking, no um, uh, uh, innovation, nothing. They are just um, that way. So be conscious in your operations. On daily basis, sit back. Carry, clear your mind and contemplate deeply on every move you want to make. It's very important. Meditate, clear your mind so that you can receive new information. Praise uh, the Lord. Number four, develop good habits. We all have good habits. We have good and bad habits. But don't let your bad habits outweigh your good habits. Because on daily basis, you'll be struggling between the good habits and the bad habit. Let your good habit outweigh your bad habit so that you'll be able to make progress. Amen. Harness productivity. Get inspired and challenge yourself daily to become better. You see, in the place of perfection, there is boredom. 
But when you are getting better on a daily basis, it gives you the energy, it gives you the power to make progress. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said it will be better and better in the name of Jesus. Also set obtainable goals. Set what? Obtainable goals. Create realistic deadlines for the goals you want to accomplish. Don't go into the year just, uh, uh, just like that and the calendar will just be turning, will be just be rolling. You need to uh, benchmark yourself. This is what I want to achieve from January to March, from uh, April to this, this is what I want to do. And at every point in time, uh, review and reappraise yourself to know where you are not making progress and what you need to do in order to uh, continue the journey. Encourage others, support people's vision and give them positive feedback on what they want to accomplish. Support people's vision and give them positive feedback. Don't be envious of anybody's vision. Don't be jealous of anybody's vision. It's not his own. It belongs to God. So when you are fighting people's vision, you are fighting God. We are wiser in the name of Jesus. I say we are wiser today in the name of Jesus. So, Number eight, believe in yourself. Have faith. That word faith is have knowledge. Amen. Have faith in what you do. It forces you to grow. It helps you to love yourself more and pushes you out of your comfort zone. The worst place to be is in the comfort zone. Because the moment you enter comfort zone, the, your thinking will shut down and your hunger will dry up. Don't get to the comfort zone. Always look for something new to do. Always look for something new to add. Not, if, not, if not only to yourself, but to humanity. Praise the Lord. Number nine, embrace pain. Embrace what? Pain. Yes, pain is P-A-I-N, not a biro. Say, no pain, no gain. Praise the Lord. No pain, no gain. You will not get anything from life without overcoming the emotional state called pain. Everything that will give you value, everything that will give you results, everything that will take you from where you are to where you want to be has element of pain. And most people surrender at the emotional state of pain. Praise the Lord. So you need to push harder to overcome the pain in order to get to your next level. Let pain not stop you in the name of Jesus. You have to learn from your mistakes. Number 10, learn from your mistakes. Say failure is a part of life. Failure is a part of life. A lot of people are so afraid about failure. And that is what is holding them from making progress. No, you cannot learn without failing. Revisit your point of failure. Adjust, strategize, and try again. Thomas Edison said that he did not fail. But he found 99 different ways of trying things. Praise the Lord. So, uh, most people, by first, second attempt, they say, ah, let's pack this up. It cannot work. But this man consistently tried 99 times. By the 100 times, he got the, the necessary result. May we not give um, our mandate, our vision uh, to failure in the name of Jesus. I say we shall not surrender our mandate to failure in the name of Jesus. So, why do we need knowledge? What is the importance of knowledge? What is the importance of knowledge? Let's look at Proverbs 20 verse 15. Proverbs 20 15. It said, there is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the leaves of knowledge a precious jewel. Praise the Lord. The leaves, the leaves of knowledge are a precious jewel. Praise the Lord. Why is knowledge important? It makes you more profitable to God and to humanity. Praise the Lord. It makes you what? More profitable to God and to humanity. And those of us that attended the workers' meeting yesterday, our father-in-law was explaining on the value you add to God and to man. And he emphasized that 
God attends to those that add value to him. A human being as well attends to those that add value to them. So if you're a nuisance, if you are a parasite, when you call that you are coming, they will tell you that they're not around. Or they will tell the man to tell you that nobody is in the house. Let's increase our value through knowledge so that we'll add value and become profitable to God and to humanity. Praise the Lord. He saves children of God from perishing. Hosea Fossey said, my people perish. Not because of their background, not because of the witches and wizards, not because of um, the people that do not like him, but because of what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Praise the Lord. Lack of knowledge. And that is what many people are suffering. What, that is what many people are going through. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. I trust God that after this meeting this morning, that you will go back and begin to put your knowledge to work so that you can be empowered. I said you will be empowered when you put your knowledge to work in the name of Jesus. It is a part of enduring wealth and abundance. The part of enduring wealth and abundance. The Bible said that uh, Solomon was the wisest person on earth as at that time. And his wealth and abundance was unequal. Praise the Lord. If you have um, knowledge, you will not be poor. Because what makes you poor is something that you have not yet discovered. And by the dent of knowledge, by the dent of learning, by the dent of searching, you'll be able to search out solutions. Praise the Lord. Number four, application of it brings unlimited power. Yes, I've said earlier on that knowledge is not power. It's the application of knowledge that gives power. Praise the Lord. Yes, because when you have knowledge and you go and try it out, it works. You get results. You have knowledge and you keep it in your brain. I think that's what um, most um, uh, educationists in our time, they, that's the problem they are having. They know so much, but all they know is in their head. Some people even find it difficult to put it down in a book that they can sell all through. So application of it brings unlimited power. Number five, it saves us from shame and embarrassment. If you have knowledge, you will avoid shame and embarrassment. Pilate was, uh, was put to shame before Jesus because he asked a stupid question. Praise the Lord. You are standing with the truth and you are asking what is truth. Praise the Lord. May we not get to that level in the name of Jesus. Level where you'll be put to shame and embarrassment because of little things that you're supposed to know. But because you did not make conscious effort to find out what it is, you you get uh, 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 disturbed and put to shame and embarrassed. It helps us to know what to do at every point in time. Ah, knowledge, application of knowledge is indeed power. Because at every point in time that you are stranded and you have knowledge, what you need to do is to find out why is this so. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for Letter Life Ministry because has opened our eyes that you can ask God question. A lot of people doesn't know that. They don't know that you can ask God question. You can ask God question. So that woman that was saying that it was, she was praying and was not getting results, I said, have you asked God about this before you start the delivery? Praise the Lord. Yes. So people go into delivery without understanding what they're delivering. So, but if you ask God, Ah, you showed me this. I don't have understanding. Please uh, take it further. Where is the root of this? Where is it coming from? And what do I need to do? That is knowledge. May you get it in the name of Jesus. So, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that count. It is, it is, it is the courage to continue that count. The courage to continue. There's nobody saying that you will not have challenges. We are not even praying that there will not be challenges. But we are praying that you should have knowledge. Because there is no challenge 
that can challenge knowledge. Praise the Lord. I said there is no challenge that can challenge knowledge because knowledge is ahead of all. The journey of knowledge is continuous and unending. Keep knowledge alive and your water pot will never be empty. Praise the Lord. I said keep knowledge alive and your water pot will never be empty. Praise the Lord. And so, knowledge is very important. Uh, let me also tell you that you cannot have understanding if you don't have knowledge. Because from the VSF 101, we know that uh, knowledge is raw facts. It's raw information that you need to process to get to the level of understanding. So you cannot process what you don't have. Amen. So, and once you get understanding, wisdom will show up because you will now apply the understanding to achieve your result. Are we together? So, I want to encourage us this morning that we should embrace knowledge. We should seek knowledge. We should make knowledge our friends on a daily basis so that it shall be well with us. Shall we rise? Let's rise on our feet as we pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning concerning that which you have relayed our way. Lord, thank you for the word that has come. I pray that your people will embrace knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. They will live up to the expectation that nothing will confront them without them fighting back through knowledge, not through ignorance. Lord, let it be so for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that beginning from this day that their life stories will change as a result of their love for knowledge. And as they do, oh God, give them a helping hand that their life will change for better. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.